My name is Kamalesh Kumar Sankhala. Uh, my patients also know me, uh, knows me by the name Dr. Kumar. It's very simple for them to say. I'm a medical oncologist uh, at uh, Los Angeles at uh, Sarcoma Oncology Center and Cancer Center for California. Uh, my field of interest is uh, treatment of rare cancers, uh, including sarcoma, and uh, oncology drug development, where I do research on uh, newer oncology drugs and molecules and try them on the patients who has progressed on all kind of conventional treatments. If you see at last uh, 50 and 60 years uh, of era of modern medicine, we made significant progress in cardiology, neurology, gastroenterology, but oncology was lagging behind. In fact, oncology is about 20, 30 years behind the rest of the medicine. And the reason for that was that we were not able to understand the molecular biology of the cancer. Now in the last 10 years or 15 years, we have learned so much uh, from our basic science research, why cancer develops, how it develops, how it progresses. And with that knowledge, the treatment and the diagnosis, diagnosis and the treatment of the cancer has exploded the knowledge and understanding of the cancer biology has made many treatments or new treatments to be developed. Right now in the last 10 years or so, and you will see in the last, next 10 years, we'll have so many treatment options for cancer. And we'll be at a stage where like diabetes or heart disease, where we still don't have a cure, we will be at a stage where, let's say if we have not been able to cure a patient, and patient has a stage four metastatic cancer, we will be at a stage where patient can live a normal lifespan with good quality of life. We may still not be able to cure the cancer, but we will be able to control the cancer so that patient can live a good quality and quantity of life. Uh, so I think that's a big progress in the last 10 years or so, a progress in molecular biology and understanding of the cancer, and because of that, development of newer treatment options. So I think this is a big uh, topic of debate uh, in US as well as the rest of the world. And it's very relevant, especially in last 10 years or so, we have so many treatment modalities. Not only really that, there is an explosion of diagnostic tools. There are tools which helps us to diagnose the cancer better. Uh, such as PET scan, newer techniques of MRIs and other things where we, we not only find out that how big is the tumor, where is the tumor located, but we can also find out whether the tumor is active or inactive and with the treatment what changes happens inside the tumor without doing surgery. So all these technologies are there to help us. But all of these has added in the cost of the management of a cancer patient as well. So we have to be very, very uh, thoughtful about using these techniques at the right place, right patient, right setting. And as an oncologist, as a physician, we have to be very, very responsible using these techniques. Uh, in US, uh, we are always responsible to answer to the insurance company who pays for these tests. Uh, but we also have to follow the ethics. We have to follow the guidelines. Uh, and there are several guidelines in the US, such as NCCN and uh, other guidelines, ASCO guidelines, where we have to follow a certain path of diagnosing and using these tests. In India, I think it's much more relevant than what it is in the US. Because in India, we are dealing with two uh, kind of population. Uh, the population which has too much, the population who has too less. Uh, when we deal with a population who has too much, uh, it should not mean that we order every possible test unless it's really relevant and helpful. Sometimes ordering more tests confuses the patient and the physicians more than solving a problem. And uh, it's more relevant in the poor patients who are not able to uh, afford this much cost. And uh, because of that, their overall treatment may get affected because of the financial burden. And uh, when I practiced, practiced oncology in India, I have seen 
many people getting affected by this and leaving the treatment in between uh, young patients and that their quality of life, their, their life depends on these things. So I think we should be very, very judicial, very, very ethical and careful about what orders we are ordering, uh, what investigations we are ordering on the patients, what kind of treatment we are choosing, whether those treatments make any financial uh, meaning for the patients or not. Of course, it has to be effective for the patient. Uh, so I think these are the guidelines which we have to follow. Uh, and as a physician, we always have to remember that we have to do the right and ethical thing in the favor of the patient. The patient should be in our center uh, and we are serving this population. And as a physician, we have given this responsible role of helping the mankind and womankind. Uh, this is my one of the area of interest. I'm very much interested in academics. I was a faculty at University of Texas and has been a mentor of many fellows and residents. Uh, the general mindset, and I have been educated in the Indian setup, the general mindset here is that we focus too much on what we are doing currently. And when the question comes where I don't know, uh, we never excite our students to go out and find the answer. I think we have to set up a mindset where we have to tell that yes, not all the questions has answer, but they should go out and find the answer for those questions. I think we have done a lot, we have progressed a lot, but I think until unless we have innovation and forward thinking in our mindset, and we have to instill that in the students from the beginning. In US, I have seen that uh, this research thing is instilled in a student, in a medical student, when they come here, come in the first year of their medical school. They have to start their research project, and that's voluntary, there is no foundation or so, and they, they can carry it wherever they like to. Sometime I have seen students taking time off from medical school working on their research, doing PhDs, coming back to the medical school, doing residency and fellowship. There has to be a mindset of forward thinking, not doing the routine things, but doing the things which keep you interested. And it helps the whole medicine to find answer to the new questions. And I think that's the reason that in US, you see so much innovation. We hear all the time, China has flourished so many things. Uh, China is making all the Apple iPhones, but Apple iPhone was innovated in US. And you see so many things which we are all modern medicine and everything, but all these came to us because of innovation. And to do innovation, you don't have to be a, a full-fledged scientist. I think you have to uh, put a seed in the kids when they are in medical school and have to flourish that throughout their medical school, residency, fellowship, uh, and so on. Since I deal with the rare cancer, so uh, in sarcoma there has been a new drugs in the last uh, two, three years. In fact, in sarcoma there were only three or four drugs in 2002. And when we come to 2012, there were 14 drugs. And now each year we have newer drugs coming in. In fact, in the last one year we had three drugs in sarcoma which were approved by FDA. Uh, now these drugs has been developed uh, because of the uh, progress in molecular biology. And now currently we are working and the most exciting part of uh, oncology is uh, tumor immunology. And as we all know that uh, cancer develops because our immune system fails to recognize the cancer cells. And now the focus is how we make our own immune system uh, familiarize with the normal tissue of the body as well as the cancer cell so that immune system can recognize those cancer cells and can kill the cancer. Uh, and this is the most natural way of dealing with this situation. So we are working on uh, some of the research on immune therapy drugs where you give some vaccines and some other drugs and markers and antibodies to block the inhibitory signals which tumor is giving to the immune system 
and telling the immune system that I'm part of body, block that uh, uh, channel and have the immune system attack on the tumor. So that's the new and exciting part of uh, uh, oncology right now.